Okay, great. Um, any blue cards? Any speaker cards? If anyone wants to speak on a case, please provide it to uh, staff. Next item on the agenda is to consider meeting minutes from January 20 and 21st study and regular sessions. Is there a motion for? I wasn't no? here, so I Anyone would like to make a motion? Make a motion. Sure. Please. Is there a second? Second, please vote. And I think, John, because I wasn't because I wasn't here, I think I need to abstain. Correct. Either way is going to be fine. Um. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. Next item is take action on the following consent item listed on the agenda. Ms. Hudson is going to read the items to the record. On the east side of Power Road, approximately one acre. This is a site plan review. This request will allow for the de development of a restaurant with a drive through Staff recommendation is approval with updated conditions that were provided in the study session. Okay. Item D2, case number Z15-005 in District 3. 865 South Dobson Road, located north of Southern Avenue on the east side of Dobson Road, approximately 1.2 acres. This is a site plan review. This request will allow for the development of a single tenant retail building. Staff recommendation is approved with conditions. Item D3, case number Z15-009 in District 5, 5259 East Brown, located east of Higley Road and south of Brown Road, approximately a half acre, site plan modification. This request will allow for the development of a restaurant with a drive through Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item E1, case number Z15-008 in District 6, the 2400 through 2500 blocks of South Signal Butte Road on the west side, located north of Guadalupe Road and west of Signal Butte Road, approximately 30 acres. This is a modification of the existing PAD overlay for parcels one and two at Mulberry. This request will modify an existing PAD to allow encroachments into the 10 foot required vehicular access setback. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Okay, thank you. Would someone like to make a motion? I, I would make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as written in or read in. Is there a second? No, I'll second. Okay, thank you. Please vote. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. If your case is one of the ones on the consent agenda, you are free to leave the building. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is Z15-007-108 East 2nd Avenue, 161 South Serene, South side of Main Street, East side of Serene. Um, to rezone from DR2 to DB1 BIZ, a council use permit for social social service facility and site plan modification. This request would authorize a limited expansion of existing substance abuse and detoxification treatment center. Would staff like to provide a quick overview? It's a, a request for rezoning. Uh, at the location of 108 East 2nd Avenue and also 161 South Serine. As most of you know, at 108 East 2nd Avenue, we have an existing facility uh, operating from there for many years. Uh, recently, our, uh, our record shows that they also bought the property to the North 161 South Serine. And uh, currently, they are a legal non-conforming use so when they came to expand <clears throat> to the north, that's when the issue came that uh, unless they rezone the entire property, uh, they cannot uh, get a building permit or uh, bring that expansion. So that's why this request has three parts. One is rezoning from DR2, uh, downtown residential, to DB, downtown business, DB1, dash BIZ, with the BIZ overlay a council use permit for a social service facility which applies to 
anywhere in Mesa if you do a social service facility. And then the third part of the request is site plan modification because <clears throat> they are uh, take, uh, combining both the uh, parcels together, creating one site, and the site is uh, modifying from what's existing today. So this request basically authorizes a limited expansion of the existing substance abuse and detoxification treatment center that is operating from there for many years. Uh, this is a challenging uh, review for staff and for everybody because uh, I'm not going to go through all the details of the staff report, just give you a, a highlight. So I'm sure the applicant is here and there I see in the audience other uh, neighborhood members who will talk about it. Maybe we can come back later. Uh, but the main thing is staff has the issue of the rezoning because it, we don't get the support of the general plan and the sub area plan and the big pictures of this area. However, we have to uh, accept that we did not get from the neighborhood any existing substantial complaint about the current uh, function there, current facility there. It's their biggest fear is when we rezone DB1 can bring in other uh, business oriented uh, land uses there that they don't want. So that's why there is a BIZ overlay to take care of the standards and also the applicant is requesting also <coughs> development agreement to make sure it's only for this prop, uh, this uh, landowner. So when there is a change of the ownership, they will lose that. So anyway, with those, uh, we find out it's, uh, and in our packet you'll see we got uh, letters from the neighbors uh, and also uh, opposing the rezoning. And at the same time, the applicant also submitted in your packet is there copies of the letter signed in support of the uh, rezoning. So, and also we recognize, I think then some of the neighbors also said to us also, the process will improve the visual appearance of that site, almost like curb appeal from both Sarain and the uh, Second Avenue. So with that, um, I'll stop here and then wait for the applicant to talk. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, is the applicant present? Would they like to make a presentation? It's your name and, name and address for the record when you get to the Hi, I'm Mark Bowker, the Pixux Laboratory, 3317 East Bell Road, Phoenix uh, Suite, 101 444 85032. Chairman and uh, members, my name is Philip Westbrooks, and I'm the owner of 108 East 2nd Avenue. Uh, basically, what Wahid had uh, mentioned is, is correct. Uh, the reason we have to rezone the property is the mere fact that we're developing the northern uh, component of that site. So it's an existing 700, plus or minus 750 square foot building that right now is relatively in, uninhab uh, inhabitable. Uh, so what we want proposing to do for the, the function of the, the business itself is just grow that to expand into bedrooms and so forth for uh, more patients and so forth. Uh, the main, I guess, concerns we had was the process on why we had to Rezone and, and 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 again because the amount of work that's required to develop that is why we're having to rezone the property. So we've had a you know we had a neighborhood meeting and, and concerns and, and so forth. We presented the boards uh, with the exterior elevations that y'all should have, uh, also the site plan and what we're doing. Uh, you know the opposition mainly came from the mere fact that, as Wahid had mentioned that they don't want a business uh, commercial zoning on in, in a residential area. But in order to expand and, and make and, and beautify that, and by the way, beautify that building up there, you know, north on the site, it really takes, uh, it would take this in, in any cost. So whether it's gonna be uh, uh, for the use or not for the use to do that, because of the demand of that expansion, we would have to rezone that property. So we're kind of in a situation where we, we have to do it. We, our, our standpoint, we, will, we don't want to have to rezone it, but because uh, it, it is written that way, we have to rezone it. And that's where the conflict comes. We would love to leave it as it is a DR2 and let it be a residential. The, uh, you know, my client and, and, and the guests of the facility and so forth, 
they've never got, as White mentioned, they've never had any negative uh, feedback there. Uh, this, you know, they're, they haven't disturbed the neighborhood. They pretty much are acting as if they were part of the neighborhood and, and, and any kind of family and so forth. So that said, uh, I'll just leave it over to Phil and he can kind of give you a little more deeper discussion maybe about River Source so we can maybe get to know that as well. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and just a couple of clarifications, if I may. One, it's not an expansion What in, in beds. I think um, he mentioned that before. We're going to keep the same number of beds. We're just moving offices into one location and then moving the beds that we currently have in the historic home over to that um, home that is just to the north. Uh, the one that Mark mentioned um, is pretty much inhabitable. So that's really what our goal is. We're not trying to expand uh, the number of beds. We're just trying to improve the look of the facility and give us some more office space, um, all in conformance with the look of the neighborhood and so forth. As uh, Mark mentioned, we did have a meeting with the neighborhoods, and their main concern was that it would be Re, when the rezoning takes place, it would make it commercial use, and then you could bring in any type of commercial use under that umbrella. It's not our intent to do that. We're fine staying with the uses that we have available to us now, and it was never our intent to do that, to, to get a higher or a different uh, zoning or commercial use. Uh, we want to continue to uh, conduct you know, our programs as they are now, just in a better facility for um, our patients or our clients. And that's really what the goal is. With that, I'll, I'll ex take any questions. Uh, Steve, can, can we hold the questions? Can you be available sure. for questions? I'd like to hear from the other. What did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. We'd like to hear. We have a couple other speakers sure. who would like to speak. I'd like to hear from them first, and then we can. Well, can I ask, ask all the questions we like? Chairman, uh, while they're up here, can I ask them a question, though? <laughs> I'm sorry, don't, don't need an um, can, we, can you hold on to it? All right, can I'll hold on. Just remember it. They're, they're not going anywhere. All right. Um, we have a couple of uh, in the audience who would like to speak, um, no particular order. Uh, Mr. Augustine Castellum. And you're opposed, and, and you have... Uh, three minutes. Perfect. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman and uh, Board. Uh, my name is uh, Augustine uh, Gastelum, or Augie, as uh, most of my friends call me. Um, I live at 157 East 2nd Avenue, uh, just across the street from this facility. Um, I am opposing this, uh, this rezoning uh, for some of the, the uh, reasons stated. Uh, I, uh, the long-term um, future of that neighborhood uh, I believe is a residential type neighborhood and this zoning will uh, obviously change that makeup and uh, based on a lot of the planning that's been done over the years uh, the central main plan in particular uh, that is a part of the general plan um, this neighborhood is specified as a neighborhood maintenance um, and a lot of the neighbors believe that this will take it away, uh, take it in a different direction. Even if the zoning, uh, uh, the, the way that the zonings are, are kind of overlaid right now, um, having that biz uh, uh, zoning there in the long term, it will still take it away from uh, the residential. And um, we do believe, as, as I spoke with a lot of the neighbors, we do believe that this neighborhood is in transition and that this type of uh, use and this type of business will, over the next uh, five to 10 years, uh, will uh, eventually move out of the neighborhood because of the, the future plans and the future development that will happen in this neighborhood. Uh, so an expansion of, um, of this facility, even if it's not in the number of beds or the number of patients, an expansion is not in the best interest of the neighborhood. And that's something that's been clear, clearly stated by a lot of the neighbors. And even some of the neighbors that signed on to their letter have signed on to the petition to uh, deny this request. Um, as as they got more information as to what was actually happening, that it was a zoning change, they uh, they did say that this does this doesn't make sense for the neighborhood. I will sign on to this, even though I signed their letter, and I'm sure you'll be able to cross reference between my petition and the names that they've um, submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you retain a question? Yeah. To me. 
Could we clarify whether we're talking to owners or? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so I am a homeowner. I've been there uh, for about seven months now. My wife and I just bought in that neighborhood. Um, I am a longtime resident of West Mesa. I've lived uh, in and around the downtown uh, since I was five years old. Um, and most of the people that signed on uh, were homeowners. I did uh, talk. There are some renters, um, long-term renters, but I did talk to a lot of homeowners. I tried to make, make that a point uh, in, in my circulating this. Great. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. David Crummy. Hi, my name is David Crummy, uh, 1339 West 1st Street, uh, Mesa. Um, I was just coming to represent the uh, Retail Arts Innovation and Livability uh, Neighborhood Group, which looks, um, which is a neighborhood group along the Light Rail Corridor. Um, we meet every second Thursday at Queen's Pizzeria, and you're welcome to join us, um, 6 p.m. Um, we have adopted the Central Main Plan as sort of our guiding document as the way that we look at the way that neighborhoods, um, as we move forward. Um, and so uh, I'm here to speak in support of the Central Main Plan um, and support the maintenance of the existing zoning and the maintenance of the this neighborhood character. Um, because that that is what the central main plan is. That's what we came together as a community to establish um, this area as a maintenance area for um, as a residential area. Um, the and with the goal of pres preserving the neighborhood and making sure that whatever zoning is there stays the same, so that at the end of the current use, um, we have no issue with the existing nonconforming use. Um, but at the end of the use, it reverts back to the, the residential character of the area um, and uh, we don't support a commercial zoning in this area. So. Thank you. Any, any questions of Mr. Kirby? No? Thank you. Thank you. Board members, do you have questions of the applicant? Uh, we can certainly bring them back up and ask away. Yes, I have a question for the applicant. I know in your application, uh, the building that's on there is just a little over 700 square feet. Is that correct? But you want to increase it to rebuild it to almost 3,000 square feet. Why is that? Uh, chairman, uh, members of the board, the reason is because currently we have in the what's called the historical home just to the south of it is where we have um, the patients now and so basically that plan is just moving those patients to that new location um, and that's the reason again do you need you need 3,000 square feet to do that well it seems like it's an excessive amount from what you have now even though it's not being used right now and uh, it it almost leads me to believe that in the future you do an ex uh, intend to expand is that not true then? That is not correct. We're not intending to expand. We have a license of 40 beds from the state health department and we will maintain that same number of license with the new bill. Okay, no further questions. Anybody else? I had a couple questions, and one of them, you said you have a license for 40. How many actual patient beds are you utilizing right now? Are we, I, do we have in there right now? Yeah, I know. I realize you have a license for 40, but how many patients are you, how many patient beds are you util, utilizing right now? Basically, how many people? I think it's uh, 37 right now. 37 right now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? I have a question. May May I uh, add something? It does vary. Sometimes it'll go up to the, the 40. It just depends on how many we have at the time. Are you the original original owners of uh, the property and facility? I've owned the property since 2006, late 2006. It, and if I could, I'd like to make one other clarification on the staff comments uh, stating that they were two different properties. Uh, when I purchased it in 2006, I purchased 
both of those properties. It was one property at the time. And then we went and had it split up into two properties because we weren't sure what we were going to do with it and so forth. But I've owned both of those since I bought, purchased it in 2006. Okay. And I did, so I didn't want you to think that I just per recently bought it and then wanted to expand into it. I've owned it since I've, since I purchased the property. And how many square feet are you in right now? <clears throat> Roughly just, I think about an eight or nine, yeah. about a total of eight or 9,000 square feet, something like that. Anybody else? Uh, using this, the smaller dwelling right now, or is it, an, is it occupied with some use? Oh, when you, do you mean the house? That the house, uh, yes. No, it's, it's not habitable. It's, it's, it would be a Has it a been danger. inhabitable since you bought the property then? It was in the beginning. Um, we actually had some of our staff living in it. But that hasn't been the case for a number of years. Probably three to five, about three years or so, I would say. Yeah, approximately three years. When you acquired the property, were you aware of this issue, the, the controversy or the issue you're facing now with illegal non-conforming use? Did I you knew, investigate uh, that at all? Chairman, uh, members, of, yes, I knew that it was illegal non-conforming use. I, I didn't realize that if I had wanted to upgrade it, that it would require rezoning. Because we don't want a rezoning. That's not our, that's not what we're requesting. That's what staff is stating we have to do if we want to improve that house. We have to do a rezoning. And so that's the only reason we're here. Otherwise, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. Um, as a rezoning case anyway. We just want to, to be, you know, upgrade the, the current house and, keep the same number of beds, et cetera. And so if, if I may inquire in, on a conjecturally, then what will happen if you're, if you're not successful in, in, in succeeding in your, in your application? I, I don't know what the other options are other than... Just continue on the way you have Just been. continue on. Yeah, we'll just continue on with our business. And, um, you know, maybe that house, that older house, just for safety reasons or something, will... Um, <clears throat> uh, scrape it and maybe put a fence around it or something like that. I'm not sure. But currently you're unab unable to improve the, the, the aesthetics or the condition of your existing facility or is this really all about the, the, the residential house that you would like to replace? Are you also trying to enhance the existing facility, the primary structure? Uh, chairman, members of the, the uh, board, uh, we're always in trying to, you know, just improve the, the uh, you know, the remodeling every five to ten years or so or as needed uh, with paint or landscaping or things like that. We've done that since we purchased it. Um, and so I'm, I'm not sure if that answers your question. It's probably fine. My thought was there, I, I thought you were saying, and obviously you would like to get the use of the smaller house and, and expand to utilize the land area that you have there. Um, but if, if it is denied, you still would be able to continue in your use. If you need to, you could make repairs and modifications to your existing structure. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, so this is really all comment. about the, the secondary parcel correct. and that residence correct. where it would need to be demolished and it's just maximizing the lot size. Legal nonconforming structures can be maintained. It's just that expansion that is, is not allowed without bringing it into conformance. One, one more question for me. Um, one of the stipulations or items listed as, as needed to evaluate the application was an operational plan. I think that was requested of you. Was that difficult for you to produce, or you didn't have enough time to to develop an operational plan that could be reviewed by staff? 
Um, Ch Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I believe we provided a um, a policy, a neighborhood policy. Is that what you're referring to, a neighborhood policy? And Ms. Ross, yeah, yeah, Chairman, uh, board members, and, and applicant, uh, we do have that good neighbor policy, but the ordinance requires a more extensive operation plan, and we've requested that information uh, to provide further details about really how the facility is operated. Uh, in different scenarios and situations, and we have not received that yet. And so that's a requirement of the council use permit that we have that before action can be taken on that item. Uh, uh, staff member, uh, members of the board, we can certainly provide that for you. That's an easy document to um, provide to you. It's just misunderstanding. I thought they wanted a good neighborhood policy, and then they had a list of questions. So we replied to those questions. But we can certainly provide for you a operational policy. Any other questions for the applicant? Any questions of staff? I have a few questions for staff, but anybody else? Go first. Um, can you um, not to rehash the entire report, but just kind of the cliff note versions, kind of the original requirements of the council use permit and um, kind of the understanding of legal non-conforming use as to why uh, for them to expand the commercial zoning would be required. Just very brief. I know you went over in study session, but. Uh, Gordon Sheffield, I'm the zoning administrator. Uh, chair and board members, the um, city council began taking a look at social, social service facility types of look, uses back in the early 1990s. Uh, in particular, there were becoming, uh, there were issues of the, the indigent and homeless that were beginning to affect downtown. Council wanted to take a look at the, um, the impacts that those created. We began to have some charity facilities, uh, in particular St. Vincent de Paul and um, uh, Paz de Cristo. Um, we're beginning to attract those folks, and then, then, then we had loitering issues that came about as because of that. Um, when they set up the social service facility ordinance, um, they, uh, in particular, were taking a look at impacts in the downtown area, and they made social And when they set this up, they made the eligibility for the council use permit um, allowance was only in certain <coughs> districts. Um, outside of downtown, it's primarily commercial districts for the uh, more commercial or institutional oriented types of social service facilities, blood plasma, uh, charity dining, things like that. Residential ones are also allowed in some of the multifamily districts. In the downtown area, they uh, did not make the resident, downtown residential districts eligible for the council use permit. They only authorized that in the um, in the, the downtown business districts, pri primarily DB1 and DB2. The, um, so from, because of that, the, it created the non-conforming aspect of this. This use was established prior to the establishment of the council use permit requirement. That made any social service facility that was in the downtown area or anywhere else, else in the city non-conforming if it had been established prior to the establishment of that ordinance. So that kind of freezes it in time. It's allowed to continue based on the, the condition it exists at the time the ordinance operated. Any expansion that goes beyond that is considered a, an expansion of a nonconforming use, and the ordinance requires it to come into full conformance with the ordinance as part of the process for being brought into conformance with the code. The, that, that's a, uh, being in conformance with the zoning code and the building code and other things is a requirement for the city to issue a building permit. The... Um, the issue in this particular case is because we don't have that eligibility in the downtown residential district, they have to rezone to a downtown business district that gives them eligibility for the council to approve the council use permit. Without that rezoning that happens first, they don't have the foundational requirement to be eligible for the council use permit. So that's the reason for the rezoning in addition to the request for the council use permit because the ordinance wouldn't make them eligible unless they had that rezoning approved first. Any questions from staff? Oh. Seems like a mess. 
um, actually. Um, um, any closing remarks, uh, Mr. Mr. Waheed, John? Yeah, I just want to <coughs> sorry add that uh, steps at this point. The uh, recommendation is for denial. <coughs> and so that I didn't share that before. That's why. Thank you, Mr. Waheed. Oh, I, I haven't called for a motion. Yeah. I thought you had a question. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Would there be any reason to wait for this operating agreement? Would that shed any new light on the circumstances before we vote? Mr. Chairman, uh, Board Member Clement, it wouldn't change anything from the staff uh, recommendation perspective at this point. Uh, it's in what way would we be enlightened in our understanding of the case and circumstances? Do, 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 would you anticipate? By having the operation plan? By having the operation plan. It would uh, give you more detail about... Uh, how they operate. Or actually how they operate. Again, the, the primary things uh, that we're interested in is how do clients arrive here? You know, what are they doing while they're there? What's the impact on the neighborhood and, and as they leave? And some of those operational issues to know that, that it, whether it is or is not an impact uh, on the adjacent neighborhood uh, for the clients that come and go from the facility. So if there is some anticipation of recommending approval, then certainly you would need to continue the case in order to review that operation plan to help make that decision. I see. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Of the board, I just would like to make mm -hmm. one other uh, statement or clarification that um, we are adding a amendment or stipulation that states um, even if we do get the rezoning, that we would maintain the current uses that we have um, so that that hopefully that would eliminate some of the concerns from the neighbors because we have tried to work with the neighbors. We had meetings with them. We understand their concerns. So we've said we're, you know, that's not our intent to have those uses and we're willing to forego those uses, just maintain the current ones we have. Um, and that way it would be, you know, a part of the of the uh, record, so that you know it wouldn't come up where we could it could be used for any future zoning or commercial zoning. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think we're any more thoughts, comments, questions. Well, I guess I guess um, I needed to state my opinion. Um, <clears throat> while I understand, Mr. Westbrook, oh, really? you well. Well, you probably, I, I know that you have been actively operating there and, and things have been fine with the neighborhood as it, as it exists right now. I, I still have the concern about um, rezoning it to a commercial property because of the intended uses that can move in, uh, even though with the council use permit, you know, there, there are certain restrictions, but if you ever did sell that property and somebody else bought it, they could come in and, and start whatever might be allowed in that zoning district. Um, I'm all, I also have the concern that this is a spot zoning, that there's no contiguous uh, business zoning in adjacent to or close proximity to your uh, existing facility. And I think that it would have a detrimental impact, it just and not, not that you wouldn't with the way you're operating now, but future uses down the road. And, and from my perspective, I have to look at it 10 years from now or 15 years from now. And whether you're still there and operating, then that's great. But if for some reason you weren't and, you know, somebody else moved in, there's a lot of different uses that could occur in that property. So those are my concerns that I have. And, and I just, um, I, I wouldn't be supporting, I would be supporting their request for denial. Anybody else in your thoughts? Yeah, basically I was going to agree with you, Chair, that it's kind of a mess. It's unfortunate is what I see. We've got a use that's friendly or palatable to the neighbors as it is, but yeah, the, that rezoning, that's pretty scary. Even with a, a willingness to restrict your use, the zoning doesn't go away once your use goes away. Is that correct? Chair, uh, members of the board, that is correct. The uses would run with it, uh, but as the applicant said, part of what they have are willing to do between the BIZ overlay and a development agreement to make the, the DB zoning act like the DR zoning in terms of the uses and setbacks and so forth. But coming back to Board Member Allen's point, though, the base zoning that's still there that you see is the first impression of what's appropriate in the area is a business zone, so that's what still causes staff some concern. And that's really the crux of the whole issue. I, I don't think the neighbors are opposed to who they are and you being there. It's just 
Yeah, the fact it, that that's almost yeah, irreversible. Yeah, I, really, I was referring to a mess, meaning that I think staff is trying to well, come I, up I with see a, that too. a method of trying to make it happen, but there was a reason why back then it was, you know, it's frozen in time, and, and there was a reason why that was done, and um, I think it has to be respected. I, I think staff was trying to figure out a way to... I, I think when, yeah, I agree with you. I think when they did that, there was a reason why it was done the way without the ability to, to give that residential district a special use permit. Michelle, sorry. No, that's okay. I, I just am echoing your comments, too. I feel bad that the mechanisms that we have aren't helpful for you in what you want to do. Uh, but I'm happy that the neighbors are saying that they like you there and the, the current use, and it seems like they're not here opposing your existence, but the expansion. So I f at least you're, you're welcome, like I said, in the neighborhood. Um, yeah, it, I just, again, it, it is a mess, and, and I do feel bad, uh, but I, I don't think at this point I would be supporting the rezoning. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I get a clarification from staff on one question? Uh, sure. <clears throat> it was my understanding, staff, that if a stipulation is put in that only these uses can be, that even if someone bought it, they still have to abide by the uh, current uses, not the rezoning issues. Is that correct? Or that, that is correct. The, the combination of the zoning with the STIP and the development agreement would run with the land. And so they, they would be stepped to just, you know, those uses. So that, again, that's the, the types of things that we have suggested or put in here. If we're going to do this, this is what it would take. Um, but, again, also as outlined in, in the staff report, it's quite a stretch from our But the zoning, zoning never process. expires right. once we do right. it. Right. It's, it's always the, there. That's the issue. It's I always see. there, and it gives an impression that the downtown zoning is appropriate in the area or the business zoning. Okay. Right. Um, someone would like to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Akita. Hey, Mr. Chairman, at this point, I'm going to move that we deny the resources uh, application for site plan review and uh, <coughs> rezone as stated in uh, Z15-007. I second that motion. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Please vote. Motion. Can we do it? Do we need to redo, do we redo it, or can we just clarify it for the record? I think the, the clarification there. Okay. So, uh, motion carries. Um, thank you for your case. Thank you for your time. Um, perhaps, uh, John, what's their what's their option after this? They're, they're still going to go to council for the hearing. This is a recommendation to them, so they have the opportunity to make the presentation to council, and they could reverse uh, the decision. All right, we have a motion. Any other business? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, just a reminder tomorrow is the Smart Tour. And right. You won't be there? Most okay. Not. Okay. Motion for adjournment? I move it. Motion for adjournment. Second. Thank you.